On that note, Carl, thank you very much. Welcome to the Halftime Report. I'm Scott Wabner, front and center this hour. The return of the bull market, at least technically. But is it really back? We'll debate that with the Investment Committee. The S&P 500 now 20% off the October lows. Joining me for the hour today, Joe Terranova, Stephanie Link, Bill Baruch, and Capital Wealth Planning's Kevin Simpson is with us for the hour today as well. Let's check the markets. We do have fresh highs of the year, at least we did earlier. But as you can see, as Carl was just saying, we did back off 4,300. We're going for the first close above that level since August. So we did exit the longest Joe technical bear market since 1948. So technically we say, okay, we're in a new bull market. But are we really? Well, it's a milestone and it's technically driven. So you asked why I will not say it's fundamentally driven and the bond market is not confirming it. So there's this divergence between what we're seeing reflected in the equity market and what we're seeing in the bond market. The bond market yields have backed up, Scott, and they've stayed there. Now, I understand Australia, Canada has raised interest rates, but think of where we were for a two year just in early May. We're, we're basically 100 basis points higher. And if you look at a 10 year, you're up about 75 basis points. So we're void of significant <clears throat> growth, that's for sure. We're still in an earnings recession. So we still in a, oh, so what you're telling me is you're not convinced we're actually in a bull market. Well, I'm giving you the reasons why. Yeah, I you know. Can, you're taking you a long time only, to get to my answer, You right? could only validate. You could only say this that. This is a yes or no question. No but, no, but you have to understand why. You have to understand why it's just concentrated to the technicals. The fundamentals are not confirming it. So I'll say this to you. It's a nice milestone. That's it. Okay. That's all it is. All right. So, Steph. Um, the question over the last couple of days is, are the bulls in charge again mm -hmm. or do the bears still have control of this market? Mm -hmm. How would you answer that question? Well, there's parts of the market that are in a bull market, right? Techno technology, comm services, discretionary. The, the SMH is up 45 percent. That's definitely bull market stuff, right? That's positive. The rest of the market is, is struggling. And that's what we've been talking about all year. That's been the biggest surprise at how narrow the market is, has been. But when you add up comm services and technologies, 35 percent of the, the, the S&P 500. So it's material. It's gotten us to where we are in the market overall. But I think because the economy is actually doing a little bit better, I think eventually we are going to see a broadening out and the laggards will catch up, especially if we are, as I keep saying, the ninth inning with the Fed. Inflation is coming down and earnings have actually held in not as bad as expected. So I think you are going to see a broadening. Does that lead us into a huge bull market? I don't I don't know, because there is alternatives out there right now in the fixed income arena as well as internationally. So I hear a no. I hear a no. Like a maybe. Like a yeah, I know, parts. But that doesn't work that with doesn't work. Yeah, but it's parts. It's that parts of work. the market. Yeah, I know, but especially on a Friday, it doesn't work either. <laughs> it's fun sitting here and talking about whether it's a bull market or a, or a bear market still. But but do you really want to be buying stocks and really loading into stocks when it's finally officially a bull market? And for for us, it's it's looking back at, at March. At the end of March, you started seeing these divergences, and our theme was bring out your 2019 playbook, and tech is going to lead us out of this hole. So for us, in in our position. In our mindset, it's been a bull market. What what happened from last week was the Russell 2000 is up about six six and a half percent since then. You're getting the breadth. You're getting other parts of this market to start to join. And the Russell 2000 really broke out of that hole. And for us, that turns on the green light for some of the other portions of the market. We've begun rotating a bit. Still, though. I'm watching very closely. I trade the futures as well. The S&P futures, 4,300 to 4,330. We need to close above there on a weekly basis, and we have not done that yet.